<clears throat> Welcome to the first in a series of how to model timber frames in SketchUp. So the learning targets of this particular video, we will teach you which SketchUp program to use, which add-on tools to include with your program, how to configure some of the settings that will save you time. We won't actually begin to model in this video clip. That'll be in our next clip in the series, but this will get you up and running. So the first thing you wanna do is go to whichever search engine you prefer. I'm going with Google. And then in the search box, I'm going to type SketchUp. Make 2017 download. I'm gonna have some options here. I'm going to click on download older versions. And so when you get to this screen, there are a bunch of different SketchUp programs available. It starts off with the Pro version, the 2018 version. Pro is awesome, but it's there's a price associated with it. Um, I'm actually running SketchUp Pro right now, um, but everything I show you today applies to SketchUp Make, which is the free version. So there's a SketchUp Pro 2018, SketchUp Pro 2017. You wanna come down to SketchUp Make 2017. And then you can select whether you want uh, Windows or Mac as your download. Um, so you can go through the process of actually installing that. I'm not actually going to install at this point because I already have it on my computer but this is the process that you would follow. So I'm gonna close this up, and now I'm going to go to my uh, SketchUp model. So I have it opened up. Up here it says SketchUp Pro 2018, but yours would say Make 2017. Seems counterintuitive that you'd be downloading something from 2017, when I mean, it's actually 2020 now, but the 2017 is the most recent free version. So SketchUp Make is absolutely free. You can use it. You can design an incredible amount of things uh, timber frame related within that free version. Um, the pro version, the main advantages are it's a little bit more powerful. There are some special tools. There's a group of tools called solid tools that are very helpful when you're working on uh, roof systems, compound roof systems, that sort of thing. Um, and there is also an associated program with the Pro version called Layout, which produces uh, really sophisticated shop drawings and things that you could use to show clients. But pretty much everything that you're going to do as a beginner can be handled through SketchUp Make with the addition of some add-on programs. So let's go over that. Um, your screen may look a little bit different because I've set my toolbar up differently, um, but along this top you will see something called the 3D Warehouse, and something called the Extension Warehouse. So the next step you're going to do is click on the Extension Warehouse, and when it gets there, in this box, you're going to type Timber Framing Extensions. and this add-on shows up. So you're gonna click on that. It's a little backstory. This is an add-on program written by a fellow named Clark Bremer. Um, he's a timber framer and a computer programmer, software developer. Um, and so he created these extra add-on um, programs that allow you to do things like print shop drawings and um, do some other things by using shortcuts. It's a really powerful thing. It is absolutely free. You can see up here it says free. Um, so we owe a huge debt to Clark for sharing this with everyone for free. Um, I would also mention that <clears throat> Clark wrote a small paperback book that uh, helps describe how to use his extensions. I'm gonna go over many of them in future videos but I highly recommend that you actually get his book 
It's called timber framing or timber frame design using SketchUp, and that can be found by going to the Timber Frame Guild webpage, so tfguild.org slash bookstore. It's actually on the third page of the bookstore, and you can see that it's timber frame design using SketchUp, and the cost is $40. That money goes directly to the Timber Framers Guild, so it's really an awesome, uh, awesome thing, awesome opportunity. So let's go back to the extension warehouse. So uh, you're going to go through the process of installing that, but before I go through that, I'd like to mention uh, down here in the bottom right, also by this developer, he has some other add-on tools, some of which are extremely useful. So I highly recommend that along with uh, installing the main extension program, that you also consider installing Rotate 90 Degrees. Um, and there is another one that's not showing up here, but will show up with yours because it's not showing up here because I've already downloaded it. Um, it's called Angle Between Faces. Um, in, in future videos, I'll show you how that, how that works. So you're gonna install these programs, and then once you've done that, this word extension will appear on your menu bar. It, it won't be there when you first open the program because you haven't added any extensions. But once you've added timber framing extensions, if you click on this, then you'll see something called TF Rubies, and that's the program. That's the, actually the old name for it. We're going to go through uh, how to configure some of the things there in a few minutes. But first, what I would like to do is go to some basic default settings or setting some defaults that I have found really useful. I do this every time I start a new model. Um, there's probably a way to save those defaults, but I haven't figured it out. Uh, but it's really pretty simple. So up here where the window tab is, if you click on that, and then go down to Model Info. We are going to start off by clicking on Dimensions, and then we're going to edit this. So on my computer, it defaulted to this font at this size. I prefer a different font, so I click on Fonts. Uh, I'm gonna type in Architect's Daughter. That's a font that I like to use. Font size 12 is pretty good for dimensions until you start pulling lots of dimensions on a single shop drawing and they start crowding each other. So you might at some point want to shift that down to a smaller font size, but let's keep it at 12 for now. So once I've made those adjustments, I have to come down, select all dimensions and then update selected dimensions. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to text and I'm also going to change screen text. To architect's daughter 12 select all screen text update selected text and I'm going to go to leader text and I'm going to adjust these and again for now I'm just keeping everything with architect's daughter and font size 12 so I've updated those and the final one I'm going to go to is units it defaults to architectural which most folks are going to use and the precision of the 16th of an inch that works really well for most people using most standard tape measures. Uh, most tape measures have increments of sixteenths, so that seems to work really well. This is also where you could adjust this from architectural to decimal, which I do for most of my models. Um, so it still gives you inches, but it will um, give you decimals instead of fractions. And you can adjust the value of that. I go down to hundredths place and leave it at that. This is really useful when you're designing compound roof systems and you're doing a lot of trig to figure out angles and that sort of thing and your answers when you're using your calculator come out in decimals. You then have to convert the decimals to fractions which is one more step, one more chance of error. So I find it really useful to use decimal inch layout um, but if you don't have the proper tape measures or framing squares that are in those increments, then you will want to stick with architectural. But notice when I went back to architectural, it left me at quarter inch. So I want to define that as 16th of an inch, and then I'm going to close that out. So that works really well. I do those things every time I start a new model. I do want to go back to 
the TF Ruby extensions and down to configure because these are just some things that I can uh, set up my program so it generates shop drawings the way I like them. We aren't going to talk about shop drawings until a future video, but this is going to be important uh, to know from the get-go. So the shop drawings, uh, I can say, have them show in x-ray mode, yes or no. Even, even if you select yes, then you can, when you're in a shop drawing, you can still switch it back to no, that's not a big deal. So I just leave it at the default of yes. Directional labels on shop drawings, I leave that at yes. This is very important because what it does is when you make your shop drawings, it labels each face, typically north, south, east, west, or top, bottom. Please keep in mind that those are not actually cardinal points on the compass at your job site. They're simply the relationship of one adjacent or opposite face to another based on the position of your model in the program with these axes, okay? So it's not truly north, south, east, west, but it does give you a reference from one face to the other. It's very similar to uh, uh, sailing. So if you're on a ship on the ocean, it doesn't matter which direction your boat is pointing, port is still port and starboard is still starboard on that boat. So within your model, north is north, south is south, but not necessarily on the globe. The other thing you can do this feature for rounding up dimensions on your timber list that will become useful later on when I show you how to generate a timber list to take to your mill once you've designed your model. The timber list can be in a, either as a text or an Excel if you're using Windows. Here's where you would switch it from English to metric if you want your units to be in one of those. I also set this to unwrap and that will be important when we start talking about shop drawings. Uh, it prints all four faces of a timber on one page and the way the each face is laid out on that page is as if you were unwrapping the timber. You start at one face and then you roll to the next face, roll to the next face. So that becomes quite uh, useful. Down here in minimum extra timber uh, length of the timber list, you can either say 12 inches or 24 inches. Um, this, this can become problematic. So if you have a seven foot timber, but you know that your mill cuts in, in two foot increments, so the smallest timber you can get is eight feet. So if you set this to 12 inches, then it will convert your seven foot timbers into an eight foot timber. You have to be careful with this and always double check your uh, timber list with your actual model because if you haven't set up these um, defaults correctly you could end up ordering more material than you actually need. I speak from experience on that. The final thing is company name. So it's really helpful to put your company name or your own personal name in this box. That way when you generate your shop drawings your name is on that shop drawing. If you don't put something in here the words company name will appear and that looks a little bit dorky. So you can customize that to whatever you want. Once you've done that, click OK and you are up and running. You have downloaded both the main program, SketchUp Make, you've added extensions, you've defaulted certain settings, and you have configured your extensions, which will become very helpful in the future as you generate shop drawings. So this is the end of the first video. Our next video will be uh, designed to show you how to start modeling in SketchUp. Our plan is to model a simple trestle pony, which is a timber framing sawhorse, basically. Um, we will go through a variety of joints and how to um, quickly design things. And we will also talk about shop drawings at that point. Keep in mind that there are more than one way to do many of the things I will show you in these videos. It's sort of like a geometry proof. There's more than one way to get to the answer. So some of the things that I do are just unique to the way I've learned how to use SketchUp or how I've found it to be helpful. You will find your own path along the way. And although I'm gonna show you things that I think are good, there's plenty more uh, options out there and different ways to do things, perhaps quicker shortcuts, that sort of thing. Um, 
but my goal is to help you get up and running. So hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you look forward to the next one in the series. Thank you.